G'day Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here and you can find me at Twitter, Instagram and Facebook at Photoshop Cafe. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to combine different photos to create a composite. So it's a very popular theme you've seen a lot, maybe these sports things and different things in stadiums and stuff like that. Now I'm going to use some photographs, put them together and create this composite. And a composite essentially is combining different photographs into one to create a believable composition. That's where the word comes from. So anyway, you could ha maybe have a shot of your friend or yourself or whatever um, playing soccer or doing some kind of a sport or some kind of, uh, could be anything really. You're gonna cut yourself out and pop yourself into a different background to make it look like you were there. So what we're gonna do is the sports one. Now I grabbed a bunch of images here from Adobe Stock. And uh, I find that it's a great place to find photos because I can search for them directly within Photoshop right here. And I have other videos that show you how to do that. Very convenient. And you can even put them together. You can get them for free. You can grab watermark versions, put them together and see if it's gonna work. It's just fun to play with. All right, so we've got this stadium. And as you can see, I've grabbed some other things. So I've got a football player here. So I'm gonna just drag that football player into there. And I'm just gonna hit enter and football is, you know, European football, which is different than American football. So gridiron is football, but in America, this is called soccer. Um, so it depends where you live. You can call it football or soccer. And now we get a couple of other things we're going to add in later on. But why don't we just start right now? I want to cut this guy out and make it look like he's in the stadium. Okay, so we've got that layer selected. Notice it shows a little cloud on here. Let me show you a little tip. So I'm just going to undo this because that cloud icon means it's a link to the creative cloud in my library here. So if I change anything, it updates in the library. If you want to have it independent, hold down the Alt or the Option key, drag it out. Notice now it's not linked. Now, if you're using the watermarked version, make sure that it's linked. You just drag it in. And in that way, if you choose to license the file, it will replace it with the high resolution unwatermarked file and you don't have to redo your image. Otherwise, if you're bringing them out here and you don't want to change it from your library, just drag it out with the option key and that way it's independent. So anyway, let's have a look at cutting this guy out. What we're going to do is grab the quick selection tool. And here's the quick select tool and it works great. Now we could select the background. Sometimes it makes more sense to do that. Uh, if it's a kind of a uniform color background, you could go around like I'm doing just selecting that way. And then other times you'll grab your object in the middle. So I'm just going to do it that way. I'm going to hit the option key for where we went over. And I'm just going to select around here. Now remember what I'm doing is I'm selecting everything but our object. If you have a very, very complex um, background, then you want to select the object. And notice I'm just using the option key. And sometimes I like to just select the whole thing and then back into it using the, the option key. Now, if you want to see what's selected and what isn't, just tap the Q key. That's Q for quick mask. And we can see, hey, that's not bad. Um, so right now we're just looking for areas here around there. Maybe we want to just kind of clean up that selection a little bit. Um, in fact, let's zoom in a little bit and I'm just going to come down a little bit here. Now it's really important that we do a good selection on our person here. Some of the other things we can get away with, um, but you really want to do a good job of selecting your person. If you're going to do a believable composite. Okay, some of that was sped up just to save you uh, being completely bored while I was doing some of that. But basically what I did is I went around the outline up close to make sure that I got, a, you know, as best a selection as I could up close there. See that? So now I can just zoom out a little bit and we can see there's our selection. So I want to inverse the selection now because I've selected everything but our guy. Now we want to inverse it. So Command Shift I would do that. And the other thing you could do is just choose the select up here and you can choose select inverse and as control shift I on Windows command shift I on Mac and then you'll notice that we've selected that we've also got you know a little bit around the edges if you want to just kind of add that we can we can just grab our little lasso tool if we want and I'm just going to use the um, hold down the alt key or the option key and I'm just going to go around here just to make sure that only our soccer player is selected and now we're just going to go back to our quick selection tool and now we're going to go up to the select and mask so let's click on select and mask and look at that it's looking pretty good 
but we can refine the selection. So let's do that. Let's have a look at it against the black. And let's have a look at it against the white. I think the black is actually going to be the one that's going to help me. I could also choose an overlay. It's not bad. And what we're going to do is I'm going to choose show edge. And turn the opacity all the way up. And then I'm just going to turn on the radius. Just a little bit until I see a fine edge there. Maybe a little bit more. And then that little edge there is where it decides what's going to be selected and what isn't. Oh, a smaller area is going to give you a more detailed, sharper edge, whereas a larger radius, if I go up here, is going to give you a softer edge, which is good for things like hair and fur. But here we want to go as thin as we can, and that's going to give us a pretty good selection. So if I turn off Show Edge, you're going to see that selection is looking pretty nice. All right. What I want to do now is I'm going to change the option here to New Layer with a Layer Mask. Now, if you have a shot against a green screen or anything like that, and you've got colored edges, turn decontaminate colors on. In this case, I don't think we need it. Now I'm just going to click OK. And now we've cut out our soccer player. So the next thing we want to do is we want to position him. So I'm just going to kind of just drag him down a little bit, like maybe, maybe here is looking kind of good. It's not bad, right? Let's bring it about there. All right. So we've got our next step done. So there's a few other things we're going to do. We're going to stylize this. We're going to jazz it up a little bit. But notice we've got this kind of light here that's going over the top of him. And I want to kind of maybe make a little bit of a flare around there so it's going to look more realistic. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the Alt or the Option key. We're going to create a new layer. And now with this new layer selected, we're going to change the blend mode from normal. We're going to change it to lighten let's choose a light and blend mode now it says fill with light neutral color so it's going to fill it with black click ok and now we've filled that with black but it's in light and blend mode and because we've done that now we can apply a lens flare to that and it's not going to show because if i move this around notice those edges are invisible so uh, it's hiding it so we're going to choose filter we're going to go down to the render and then we're going to choose the lens flare effect here and what we want to do is we want to put it about there. So I'm just going to kind of move it. I'm going to change the type of lens flare to maybe something like that. And notice you can change the size of it. You can do different things. So we're going to grab that flare and just click OK. And notice it applies that flare right there. And we can just now move it right there over that part of his arm. So it's going to start to look a little bit more realistic. We can also pull the opacity down a little bit if we want. So just give it a little bit there. See that? So now it kind of looks like that lens flare is kind of going through and hitting his hand. So it's a little bit more believable. But don't worry, we've got some more effects and things that we're going to do now to kind of pull things together. So what we want to do now is create some kind of a little bit of an atmosphere in here. So why don't we go into our library and here's some uh, texture that I downloaded, some lights here. Uh, with some smoke and so I'm just going to position that and let me just uh, control T or command T for free transform and we're just going to raise that up a little bit and let's make this way bigger because we don't necessarily want those lights showing in there although you could if you wanted um, you know you'd have to make them fit so let's try some different blend modes here if we choose something like a soft light you know it's not really showing too much here so there's a little bit of atmosphere but not a ton we could go into a hard light, which will do the same thing, but give it a lot more. Notice it's also starting to affect the color. Um, another one that works is overlay. See that? And it's kind of just creating a little bit of effect. But then there's other things you could do too. If we choose something like a screen, you can get a really kind of foggy. And same with lighten. See that? Lighten's not so good, but maybe the screen blend mode's looking pretty good. But let's bring the opacity way down. And what we want to do is kind of... Uh, just blend that in a little bit. So I'm going to add a layer mask. So we've added a layer mask to that now. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit the black and I'm going to choose a soft edge black brush. So turn the hardness down. Nice large brush. Set the opacity about 30%. And now let's make that brush even bigger. I'm just hitting the right bracket key. And now I can just kind of gently just kind of paint in here. You know, so the foreground, I don't have as much atmosphere. 
maybe over our character a little bit there. Um, and if you want to get really accurate, just kind of select, see that mask? Control click on that mask there. Notice now we're selecting the mask and we can paint out just on that area of, so we can have some of that atmosphere behind them. So Command Shift I, let's paint that back in. So there we go. So if you can look at that now, you can see there's that effect and it's more behind them than it is in front of them now. So we're just kind of adding that in just to give a little bit of atmosphere. You know, a little haze, it kind of looks, start to look a little bit more realistic of what you would actually see. Now let's do another overlay just to kind of give this a little bit of drama. So we're going to go in here and we're going to choose this one here. And I'm just going to drag that in. And this has got some cool kind of texture in there. So let me just drag that out. And once again, you know, I found these on Adobe Stock. You can take your own photos, of course, and use those if you want. All right, so let's have a look at something like maybe a screen blend mode. And see how now we've got this over the top. It kind of looks a little snowy. Um, there's different blend modes we can choose. The overlay, soft light, and hard light will give us the most interesting results. See that? Um, in this case, I'm going to use screen. Let's see what lighten looks like. Lighten's not bad, but I'm going to use screen and then just kind of bring down the opacity a little bit. So we've got some, you know, just some texture here, just kind of adds a little bit of drama and excitement to this. All right, so what we want to do now is we want to take these different elements and start to pull them together into something that's kind of interesting. So one of the things I love to do is to select all the layers, and now I'm going to put these together into one layer. So I hit Shift, Command, Option on Mac, and that would be Shift, Control, Alt on Windows. So that's the three modifier keys plus E for merge. And then what it's going to do is it's going to create a composite layer. See that? So we've got everything together in one layer while everything else is underneath there. So if we need to get back and work on those other layers, we can. It's all there. But right now we've got it together in one layer. And the reason I want to do that is because now I can go into Camera Raw and do some things. So I'm going to choose Filter, and I'm going to choose the Camera Raw Filter. Now this will only work in CC. If you're working in other versions, um, you can do the composite layer, but you can't necessarily go into the camera raw. You would have to save it as a TIFF file, then open it from Bridge. All right, moving on. So we can just start to, you know, if we want to give it color and stuff like that, now it's going to affect it across the board. See that? And so maybe just slightly warm that up a little bit. And, uh, you know, we might want to give this a little more contrast. And notice we're losing our highlights, so let's bring those highlights back in. So we can pull that way down there. And let me play a little bit of the contrast. I don't want to lose it all. There we go. And if you wanted to open up the shadows, you could. Let's give it some blacks. Notice this histogram. We want that to be about on the end there. So let's pull that down. See that? And it brings back our contrast. And if you want to push the whites a little bit, you can as well. All right. Now, one of the things you may want to do just to give it more of a cinematic look is maybe pull the vibrance back just a little bit. See that? So it's not quite as colorful. And if you look at things like um, movies and stuff, you'll see that that happens a lot in cinema. Also, the blacks are usually crunched in a little bit. So we're going to give it a slightly cinematic look. All right, the next thing we're going to do is let's go into the split tone here. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to give it a little bit of a cinematic color. So we're going to take the shadows. We're going to pull them down to like a teal blue. And then just pull up the saturation a little bit and just put a little blue into those shadows. And you'll see that that just gives it a nice kind of a cinematic feel. Let's just kind of play around with that a little bit more. I'm thinking about there. And, um, you know, we could give it a little bit of a yellowish kind of orange color here in the uh, highlights. Let's just give it a little touch. See that? Just give it a little touch there. And that gives it a little bit of cinematic coloring. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the effects. And I'm going to give it a post crop vignette. So I'm going to pull it down a little bit just to kind of darken those edges down. Um, you can see the midpoint. We can play around with that. And then what I'm doing is just giving this a nice cinematic kind of a feel. And then I'm going to click OK. And so we can see now by, you know, doing the camera raw with everything together, what it does is it kind of brings all the different layers together because we're adjusting them together. It kind of makes them fit a little bit more. 
because it um you know we're applying basically the same kind of effects and stuff to those i'm finding up here is a little distracting over this area so maybe we want to um, just give it a little bit of a gradient so i'm just going to create a new layer on the top here so we're going to grab the gradient tool make sure it's set to linear normal opacity set to 100 hit the d key make sure foreground background color so we've got black and then we're going to go in here and choose black to transparent so what i can do now is i can click up here and pull down a little bit and see how it's just dark in the top now we're just going to bring the opacity down a little bit on it so we're not going to go full on with that see that just a little bit just to kind of lead the eye in a little bit more to the action and another thing you could do for just kind of a finishing touch if you wanted is create a new layer on top and we're going to add you know just kind of a little bit of lighting and we can just grab you know this color here it's a yellowy orange but more on the yellow side it's a kind of golden color we've still got our foreground there see that foreground to transparent where we're grabbing and we can just kind of click and drag down a little bit to add that in the corner now you can change the blend mode of that to something like a you know a soft light you know there's other you know hard light will give it a different effect there um, overlay and screen will also give it another effect see that screen gives it more of a kind of a flare but in this case i kind of i'm kind of liking the soft light and it's just giving it a little bit of color variance makes it look a little bit more interesting all right, guys, so that's how we put together a composite. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to become part of the cafe crew, hit that subscribe button right now. And every single week I do a new tutorial, then you'll be alerted to it. Don't forget, hit that like button, add a comment. And until next week, I'll see you at the cafe.